What's dangerous is when the universe pick you and you put on the magic glasses, there's rules that go with them. You can never take them off. You never see things that they're supposed to be. You see things as they are. They can never force nobody else to wear them. Good evening. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, it's been a kind of a crazy day uh, with news. Not long ago, uh, there was a pretty nasty accident 
um, in Greece, I do believe. I'm pulling it up right now. Um, it was just breaking when I saw it uh, come up. Yeah, Greece. Um, let me go ahead and show you that real quick. Let me. I didn't have this up to talk about initially, but it is uh, notable. Again, there wasn't. When uh, when the news came out, it was literally a headline and a picture. Uh, there was no text yet. So uh, it says at least a hundred people have been injured and killed following a head-on collision between two trains in northeastern Greece. Some 350 passengers were on board one of the trains at the time of the crash, with rescuers pulling many survivors from the wreckage. The crash took place shortly after midnight on Wednesday near Temp or Tempe, I don't know how that's pronounced, located close to Greece's eastern coast and some 144 miles north of the capital city of Athens. A representative of the Greek fire service, Vasilis, oh gosh, um, Vathrakogianis, confirmed 16 fatalities in Russian, uh, in Russian, I, my thought was, I can read that easier than I can read Russian. You see how my brain works? And so it through the word Russian. My brain thinks about 20, 25 things at the same time at any given time. So that's why once in a while you might have an odd word slip out because it's probably from another conversation my brain has decided to take on. I control one conversation. The rest is up to that nonsense. But anyway... <clears throat> That's why I said Russian. I was trying to explain it. Because, I mean, come on. Vath, Vathrako Giannis? I'm pretty sure I'm pretty close on that. And uh, I can't get anywhere near close to that with, like, Russian or German. Anyway, total side topic. Uh, confirmed 16 fatalities in addition to the 85 wounded. Around 20 of those injured are said to be in serious condition after the accident, according to state-run broadcaster ERT News, which noted that several train cars were derailed in the collision. It was a very powerful collision. Um, this is a terrible night. It is hard to describe the scene. Kostas Agorastas, uh, the regional governor of Greece's Thessaly region, told state media, adding that around 250 survivors uh, had been evacuated to Thessaloniki on buses. So, um, crazy, crazy accident. Um, like I said, I was just breaking shortly after we started the show here. Um, <clears throat> aside from that, uh, like I've, like I've been saying, um, the world is not moving into a better space. Um, things, and when I say things, I mean everything, is um, continuing to escalate. And I really, at this time, don't see any reprieve coming. Um, I wished it was different. I'm just here to report what I see, report what I read, what I hear. And that's all I do. I don't, uh, I'm not here to agenda size any of it I just want to give out the information tell you where I think my opinion of where it is we stand and or what it is we can do and let you take it from there that's that's what my role what I try to do here um, there are too many people out there with too many agendas and news is the last thing because news is information, and information is the last thing you need propagandized. And any time somebody approaches news and information from a political aspect, it's going to be propaganda. There's no way around it because it's the nature of the beast. <coughs> you know, um... The left would think you're the devil for wanting uh, capital punishment, okay? The right would think the left is the devil for wanting murderers and rapists, or, well, rapists generally don't get uh, executed, but, um, but you know, murderers, um, 
you know, that the left thinks that they should be uh, forgiven. And, you know, and I'm not speaking all of the left. I'm not speaking absolutes on any of this because there's a lot of people that go other ways. I mean, there is no way anybody could pin down what my thoughts were on all the different subjects in and around politics. There's just no way because some of my views would be considered extremely leftist and some of my views would be extremely right and some of it wouldn't even fit any of that. So, in fact, much of it wouldn't fit the left or the right. Um, Remember, uh, let's take the student loan debt crisis for an example. The left says "Ah, you need to fix, you know, you need to to quote-unquote forgive these loans and I'm said quote-unquote for a very important reason because that's not what happened um the left says that you need to forgive these loans and the right said well you sign the damn dotted line dumbass deal with it neither one is right the reason i say that is because number one this debt forgiveness isn't forgiveness. That debt's getting paid. This is a bank bailout. That's what that was, a bank bailout. There wasn't no damn debt forgiveness going on. The American tax dollar is what paid that debt. And that is not debt forgiveness. That's a payoff. Government subsidized payoff. That's not cool. However, I don't believe that all of these kids should just have to deal with it. Why? Because they're kids and they were taken advantage of. You know, if the if the adults, if the parents had any decency, they would have been there to say, "Uh uh-uh, no, did you read these terms? Maybe we need to consult the family attorney and talk over these terms and find, you know, something responsible, doing something. You get a lot of people that think that posting on Facebook or this or that and the other thing, that that is, they're doing something. No, you're not. No, you're not. Have you been in your school administration's face about some of these policies? No? But you've complained on Facebook. Hmm. Okay, Um, I'm going to talk that up right along the lines of voting and the amount of success that that has had. I, um, I don't know, man. We are in a bad way. And, oh, let me forget, uh, finish up on that quote unquote, quote unquote forgiveness nonsense. So, because there is, you need to understand all sides of it here. The kids were duped. They were taken advantage of. And that needs to be looked at in all of this. And in fact, I think it needs to go beyond looking, being looked at. And I think financial institutions needs to have to pay. I don't think much of that debt should have had to have been paid off. I think much of that debt should have been forgiven by the government saying, look, here's the deal. You kind of forget about these numbers here? Or we're going to come after and we're going to start jailing the individuals that were involved in doing this to the kids and to tricking the kids. Because if you don't think that they were tricking the kids, you're silly. That is the responsible way to deal with this. Not just say, oh, well, let the kids deal with it. Or from the kids aspect, well, let the government pay it. Neither, neither way is correct. And so if you approach stuff from a political mindset, there is no damn way in most cases that you could come out with an actual solution. What you come out with is agenda and we shouldn't be agenda sizing our life it's probably not a good idea and unfortunately I think that's what so many people do 
and it's creating chaos. Absolute chaos. Take this for instance. This happened right in St. Louis. When I saw that happen, my jaw dropped open. Not that I think St. Louis would be above this. Oh, hell no. But uh, it was still jaw-dropping. <clears throat> Tim Pool was talking about this. A man arrested. That, in fact, that's where I heard about it. I didn't, I didn't hear about this from local news or anything. I heard about what happened locally here from Tim Pool. Man arrested after fatal shooting in downtown St. Louis. Police arrested a 23-year-old man Tuesday morning, this morning, who was allegedly involved in a fatal shooting in downtown St. Louis Monday morning, yesterday morning. The shooting happened around 10 a.m. on Tucker near Lucas. Police said witnesses told them, there were, witnesses, there was a video shot that's gone viral. Police said witnesses told them there was an altercation prior to the shooting. The victim was found lying on the sidewalk, suffering from a puncture wound to his head. A puncture wound. Not a gunshot wound, a puncture wound. I find that interesting. I don't know why, but why would they say puncture wound and not gunshot wound? Just interesting. Um, anyway, <coughs> around 2.40 p.m., police found the suspect entering a library on Olive Street and took him into custody. Police said the person that was shot appeared to be homeless and his identity remains unidentified. So, again, there was a video of a guy that was standing inside of a, one of the, the businesses there and, um, and filming through the window with, his, I'm assuming, his phone. And um, nobody... Nobody made an attempt to even stop the guy. It took the guy, I'm not going to play the video, but it took the guy a relatively long period of time to commit the act because the gun wasn't loaded. And it almost seemed like he had to f figure out how to load the gun. And I think it might have actually gave him a bit of a problem. I'm not sure. It might have gave him a bit of a problem. And the guy, um, it took a long time for him to get a, a round in the chamber, and for him to actually shoot the guy. <clears throat> plenty of time, plenty of time for somebody to have gone out there and put a stop to this happening. So that's one aspect that I want to point out. Obviously, the other aspect is the act itself. Apparently, they must have got into an altercation elsewhere. I don't know what happened, what went on. But uh, that is pretty crazy. Broad Daylight walks right up. Like I say, messes with the gun for a period of time to get one in the chamber. And then <clears throat> just points the gun at the guy's head and pulls the trigger. Broad Daylight, right on the sidewalk. Right in the middle of downtown. That's pretty messed up pretty messed up and I have no idea what led to this or anything or anything I don't know any of the details so um it's crazy it's just crazy by the way I will report I just looked over and noticed it remember all my bitching and, and moaning because we never made any revenue off video content over on the other channel which by the way uh, I do believe we'll be able to go back to tomorrow night. We'll be back on the regular channel, I believe. But all the pissing and moaning I did because we weren't getting uh, we weren't getting compensated for our ads on our videos and stuff. And uh, I'm pleased to report. I am very pleased to report that as of this time, I show an estimated revenue of point. 005 cents. Now, don't get that confused. That's not. That's not five cents. Um, our estimated revenue is uh, 0 0.05 cents. So yes, a half a cent. Now, if that was Bitcoin money, it might <laughs> it might accomplish something. A half a Bitcoin might get us somewhere. But uh, 
Anyway, I'm happy to report that now apparently I am getting compensated for the content on the channel I'm currently banned from using. But, uh, hey, <laughs> one battle at a time. So anyway, um, back to that. that that's just crazy, stupid, messed up, and um, I expect, oops, I expect that there's probably um, going to be more nonsense like that. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. Hang on here. Let me fix my screw up. I meant to close out that window. Close out the Twitter window, which means that I just, uh, you know, lost my spot. That's okay. I got it back. I got it back. Okay. Huh. <sighs> Messed up, man. Messed up. Alright, so... The situation, um... Involving possible conflict. And again, I want to make myself very clear. That the more and more as time goes on, I am becoming more solidified in my position that these, these countries are working together that there is not actually a rift between the world leaders. I am pretty damn convinced of it at this point. Here's why. It's been pointed out by many that in many different ways, uh, the United States has been following China models, right? All the way down to social credit score system, all kinds of different things that they have long been implementing, or for a while anyway, in China, that are slowly working their way into our government. There is no sign of this letting up. In fact, there's a sign, uh, uh, clear signs of, of massive escalation when it comes to this stuff. They are just laying all the groundwork. They are just building all the infrastructure. They're putting everything in place. By the time that they let you know that they decided that they're going to be a one-world government and all that fun stuff, they will long have everything put in place. And I'm telling you right now, there ain't a jack damn thing you're going to do. Period. Because that's how they work. That's how anybody with any damn common sense and, uh, and strategy works. They, they get their ducks in a row before they show even any sign of their agenda. So, be ready for this. I think it's really going to throw a lot of people for a curve. I'm not saying that, they, that there won't be wars. I'm not saying that they won't be flying bodies home in the numbers. I'm not, I'm not making that claim because I believe firmly that they will be. And I believe that there's going to be plenty of conflict right here on our own homeland. I, um, man... We're in for a hell of a time from everything that I can see, every indication that I can tell. Even if it was, as it appears on the surface, it would be bad enough in and of itself. But the fact that that's just a top layer, that's just a front for something that's even more evil and sinister, that's messed up. And I'm spilling coffee. That's a crime. Nobody, nobody likes crotch coffee. <laughs> All right, I'm better now. <laughs> Not mentally. 
I'll never be good there, but uh, my crotch is dry. <laughs> I know you wanted to know. Don't worry, I'll give you updates. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's do some news, because otherwise this is going to go downhill. Because I'm not uh, <sighs> mature. So anyway... I got this article. Pentagon makes nuclear prediction. <clears throat> Iran is just 12 away from making enough... Um, 12 what? No, 12 days. See, they could have said days there, but they didn't. Iran is just 12 days away from making enough uranium for an atomic bomb, the Pentagon's top policy official told Congress on Tuesday. Under Secretary of Defense for Policy Colin Powell, not Colin Powell, was asked about the defunct nuclear deal with Iran while testifying at the House Armed Services Committee hearing about arming Ukraine. <coughs> Whatever. That had nothing to do with you. Uh, Iran's nuclear progress since we left the JCPOA has been remarkable, Cowell said referring to the 2015 agreement by its acronym back in 2018 when the previous administration decided to leave JCPOA, it would have taken Iran about 12 months to produce one bomb's worth of fissile material. Now, it would take about 12 days. According to a confidential IAEA report, Seen by the Associated Press on Tuesday, the United Nations nuclear watchdog's inspectors had allegedly discovered traces of uranium, particles enriched up to 83.7% in Iran's underground Fordo nuclear site. 90%, I believe, is supposed to be the um, level. Uh, however, they found no signs of Tehran actually stockpiling it, in line with Iranian officials' explanation. A Baruz Kalmavandi, spokesman for the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran, previously dismissed a similar report by Bloomberg as slander and a distortion of the facts. <clears throat> While U.S. officials and media claim Iran may be on the cusp of producing enough fissile material for a nuclear weapon, the Pentagon reportedly doesn't believe Tehran has the technology to actually build one. Now, I'm going to say that they said the same damn thing for years, years after North Korea had already had them. And I've been saying for quite some time that Iran, they've already got them. I don't know why they play these games. I... I I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Why not just be straight? I I'm sorry. I'm not an idiot. And I know damn well they've long done it. And I can't be the only person that's not an idiot on the planet to have figured out that they have long done it. And um, why? why? Why act like we don't know is, is the question. You know, we probably can't prove it. We probably don't have a way to undeniably prove it. We probably don't have evidence, the hard evidence. But, I mean, government makes claims about all kinds of other stuff when not only is there no evidence, but when they're lying through their teeth about what it is that's going on. <coughs> <coughs> Damn, coughing. I'm, no, I'm good. I didn't come down with any viruses or nothing. I don't need a vaccine. I'm good. I'm good. That You know, the rabies vaccine. I don't need rabies. I'm good. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm, you know, I of course I didn't mean a, a, the COVID vaccine. No, give me 10 because we need those. Those are good. From Speak to your doctor. Speak to your doctor, get get a professional medical advice, but uh, vaccines are good. Right, YouTube? Pricks. Anyway, um, 
I am not mature enough to do the show tonight, guys. I just, uh, I'm going to do it. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just warning you. I mean, what are we going to do? I mean, it's, some of this stuff is pretty screwed up. U.S. Treasury, you know that bitch, Janet Yellen, um, salt of salt and pepper, had went to, uh, <laughs> sorry, I told, I, I warned you, I warned you. Anyway, the bitch took a surprise visit to Kiev, right? I'm being respectful. Anyway, she traveled to meet President Vladimir Zelensky. You know, that dude over there doing photo shoots and acting like he's being a president uh, throughout a war. And um, I hate to know, you know, she probably, I don't know, they probably stay at the local Motel 6 or something like that together. I don't even want to know those details. Anyway, she went to go see the schmuck and some other top officials vowing indefinite support for Kiev despite a lagging U.S. economy and trillions in government debt. So, the unannounced trip to the Ukrainian capital kicked off on Monday with Yellen, Yellen saying she wanted to highlight the White House's close partnership in providing economic and budgetary support for Kiev during her meeting with Zelensky. Now, mind you, mind you, in the United States right now, that many of the people that are on, on the, uh, the SNAP food program, this is the first month that they will not have an extra $95 added to their account because of the increasing prices of food. Okay? They were getting an emergency benefit. Uh, it's been going for a little while. It initially started because of the COVID stuff. Then, even once the supply chain issues kind of started to get a little better, that's when inflation started to hit like crazy. And so there never has been and still continues to be no break in prices for most foods. In fact, it's still going up. So that's what is so frustrating to me about this. I, you know, I cannot believe that we're sending billions of dollars to Ukraine, promising them promising them an existence while they're saying to hell with their own people in their own country. It makes no sense to me. The entire system is working completely and totally backwards. And I don't know about you, But that's exactly what I would do to dismantle something. Because that's how I do it. Not that I dismantle. I have, all my life, all 50 years, I'm one of those people that reverse engineer things. I have a pretty big problem understanding things from the right direction. (laughs) I don't know. It's just the way my brain thinks. But... I can reverse engineer something and understand more about the theories involved in how that item operates than what I ever could have learned by trying to go forward. I don't know. It's weird. My brain's weird. I just, it is what it is. That is exactly how I would dismantle a nation. I would... I would make things completely unjust is what I would do in every in every fashion not only just in the courts but also in in the educational system in the financial system even in the medical system that's what I would do I would make things unjust because it's only going to be a matter of time before the people turn on each other Lo and behold, what's going on? Which is another reason why I say, don't get involved in the emotional 
messes of the political parties because that's what it is. It's an emotional mess on either side. Don't get involved in it. Look at the issue. Look at it for what it is, not for what your team needs it to look like. And find an actual solution, not something that fits with one ideology or something that fits with another. No, a solution, which many times don't fit any ideology. They kind of go against each other. I always tell people, idealism in a world of survivalism will get you killed. And that's a fact. If you're sitting there talking, uh, worried about how, or not worried, but um, if if your method of operation is that you're going to try to talk the person into not shooting you for your can of peaches, because your ideology is, is people really don't want to be violent or whatever kind of crazy thoughts you have. Well, you let me know how that is when you got a bullet in your ass and, and a can of peaches taken from you. Because idealism and survivalism don't work out so well. The survivalism overpowers the idealism beyond an imaginable level. It doesn't stand a chance. And it's unfortunate. The whole survival of the fittest thing. It's a very unfortunate thing. But let's stop lying. That is human nature. We are animals. We are not. This whole civility thing is bullshit. This isn't who we are. This is, <laughs> we're domesticated. Just like dogs are domesticated. Human beings are domesticated. Don't let anybody bullshit you. We're domesticated. <clears throat> we are a tribal <laughs> species. We are a violent species. We are a competitive species. Uh, we are probably the worst, most dangerous species on this planet. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Do you see most other animal species pulling the kind of shit that we do? No. Ding, 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 ding. See, I think that's where some people get it wrong. Some people think, Humanity is normal and that, that we all have, we have a very loving and nurturing tendency for our, uh, well, we're supposed to, for our own. You see how we're getting even pulled away from our primal? They are taking every bit of individuality out of our lives. Why? Because then that makes us extremely demoralized. We have nothing to fight for. And we just give in so we can eat, so we can live. S screwed up. And it's brought to you by bitches like this. Um, this is kind of probably something important to take note of and that would be the Kremlin's view on things right now and they're saying that NATO is de facto at war with Russia. It says the U.S.-led collective West must change its approach to global security uh, and finally take Moscow's concerns into consideration before talks on the new START nuclear agreement can be renewed Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov has insisted. Speaking to the Izvestia newspaper for an interview published on Tuesday, Peskov said relations with the United States and Europe have changed radically since President Vladimir Putin formulated draft security treaties that were sent to Washington, Brussels, and Vienna in late two, uh, 2021. Only to hear that they were not ready to talk about anything with us. If they wanted, they could have sat down at the negotiating table back then before the decision to launch mil a military operation in Ukraine, he said. There would have been a very, very complex, positional, sometimes irreconcilable, uh, irreconcilable talks, but they would have been underway, but they refused. So, um... 
With the failed attempt at dialogue, tensions continued to soar between Moscow and the West, and in the lead-up to the conflict in Ukraine, Peskov argued that NATO is now fully involved in the hostilities, noting their intelligence is working against us 24 hours a day. Their weapons are supplied to Ukraine for free to shoot at our military, not to mention that they shoot at Ukrainian citizens. The moment when NATO de facto became a participant in the conflict in Ukraine, the situation changed, the spokesman continued. In fact, the NATO bloc is no longer acting as our conditional opponent, but as our enemy. President Putin was and remains open to any contacts that can help Russia achieve its goals in one way or another, Peskov continued, preferably peaceably, peacefully at the negotiations table. But when this is not possible, also by military means, as we are seeing now. And I think you're going to see, I think you're going to see Ukraine light up. I really do. I think that um, Russia's, I I don't, there's a lot of people that say that this is going to be a years long war. And I don't see that happening. See, that's, that's, that's what a dumb country does. A dumb country gets involved in 20-year-long wars and runs out of the country with its tail between the legs while the same people that they were trying to take the country from took it back. That's what a dumb country does. A smart country goes in, tries to deal with the issue in uh, with a... Ah, what's the word... There is no, truthfully, there is no acceptable, you know, an acceptable level of violence. That I, It's odd for me to even say. But, you know, they didn't just go into Ukraine with nukes. They went in and they fought the war pretty much on the same level that Ukraine could fight back. That's what I saw. But I don't think that Putin is remotely interested in playing footsies for the next 20 years like we did in the Middle East. I think Putin's going to tire quickly. And I think Putin's going to put his boot down. And I don't think he's going to take a long time to do it. In fact, I think he's setting up for it right now. And I think we're probably going to be seeing the fireworks pretty quickly and that's coming from information that's come from news reports you know Putin has said hey you know with the way that the West is supplying them with longer range weapons and I believe I covered this on the show um, that that means that Russia is going to have to push the Ukrainian military and those fighting with them further back further west in Ukraine because the longer range the weapons, the easier it is for them to be able to get contacts in either across the Russian border and or um, the regions of, of course, Donbass, Lugansk, Zaporozhye. Um, so I don't think Putin's going to screw around. I think he's going to form that line. I think he's going to push them back. And I don't. I think that if nobody's willing at that point in time to sit down and have a talk, I think Putin's going to go ahead and move in and just take the country. So, and I, I don't think he's going to play games with it. I don't think it's going to take years. I think it's going to be a pretty freaking swift operation, probably a matter of two to three months. So, that is what it is. I don't know. I just kind of have a knack for these things. These strategy um that's what i see him doing we'll see we'll see i could be totally wrong we'll see again and i've got to keep reminding even myself of this that um much of this i think is a show anyway but i think it's going to be you know i think they're going to play the parts of the movie as correctly and accurately as they can I mean, those that can. Of course, Biden can't remember his lines. He can't remember to put on his underwear. So, hey.
gets all confused talking about rabbits when he's trying to tie his shoes. It just doesn't work out well. Um, and you've got this. U.S. preparing false flag chemical attacks in Ukraine, says Moscow. Um, that's telling me that the U.S. is up to its old tricks. Uh, that's exactly what that's telling me. Um, do I doubt it? Absolutely not, because I watched it happen in, like, Syria and other countries over there. I watched it happen time and time again. And, um, you know, even even back in, in uh, the whole situation in the Middle East, uh, before, I believe, Desert Storm. In fact, I think it was the, um, I think it was uh, the final straw as to why they moved in in Desert Storm. And that was the whole baby incubator thing, right? But even going back, um, and I've showed it on their show many, many times. Now if I do it, they'll nail me with copyright. Um, but there's like CNN footage of a completely fabricated chemical weapons attack. And it's obvious. The acting is so piss poor. It wouldn't even make it to Netflix. It's so piss poor. Um, but it made it CNN. And... Um, it's bad. I mean, it, I, I joke about it because there's two guys in the footage and uh, they're supposedly doing the news briefs, you know, their updates from on location and the dangerous, you know. And uh, all of a sudden the sirens start going off and everybody's starting to run around and people starting to get tense. And one guy grabs a steel ballistic helmet and puts it on and the other guy grabs a gas mask and puts it on and... The guy with the gas mask didn't have a helmet. The guy with the helmet didn't have a gas mask. And come on now. Okay? <laughs> I mean, come on now. Uh, but everything about the scene, everything. And in fact, it gets worse. There's video that was taken of the employees of CNN or whatever, whoever it was, that they were joking around. They had like a little missile they made, and they're flying it around on the camera. Yeah, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm dead serious. So that, and it, this is this is why I do bitch and moan a lot when people that don't really follow the news try to come to YouTube and do the news, because somebody that just tries to come to YouTube and does the news, somebody that hasn't been tuned into it for, I don't know, two, three decades, wouldn't remember this. They would have no clue of what I just told you about. That whole CNN debacle, that whole, the fake baby in the incubator bullshit story, because that was bullshit too, folks. Um, you can go back and you can watch the little girl um, there was a little girl that um, her interview really got pushed out on the media. And you could tell by the way that she was answering questions and stuff that that's not what was going on. And um, they're doing it again, plain and simple. They're, they're doing it again. So keep, keep your eye out for it. Um, during the intro of the, the show, uh, there's some clips that come from uh, one of the supposed chemical attacks, I want to say in Syria, it was either in Syria or Turkey, if I recall right, where the children are being treated for, for uh, the chemical uh, attack. Um, <clears throat> from my understanding after investigations into the materials used in that attack, it came back to chemicals that were produced by the United States. But you won't hear that on CNN. You won't hear that on Fox News. You won't even hear that from these pepper channels because they don't know. That's why I get frustrated. With this job comes a responsibility. We have to get it right. Because 
if we just go by knee-jerk reaction based on the information that's provided to us, I want to make that, I want to emphasize that's provided to us. And they can get us to do any damn thing they want. All they have to do is get us to, to get emotionally engaged. And then they literally control. Um, okay. Oh, um, and this is something to keep an eye on. So, during uh, Obama's reign of terror, um, there was a whole lot of high-level um, military members that were either dismissed, uh, quit, Whatever I mean, there was a huge shakeup in the top brass of our military. That has continued to go on uh, from the Obama administration. Now, of course, uh, to my knowledge, Trump didn't encourage any of the nonsense to go on when he uh, was at the helm. But now that. Uh, bumbling dumbass Biden is in office uh, we're right back on the Obama direction so keep an eye on this stuff this is this is disturbing to me this is disturbing to me US Air Force sacks nuclear base staff the US Air Force has dismissed six military service members who were stationed at a key nuclear base, including two commanders that were sacked over loss of confidence in their ability to perform assigned duties, according to an official statement. The firings occurred at Minot Air Force Base in Ward County, North Dakota, which is the only US military base that hosts two legs of the nuclear triad. Minot, which should say something about the facility, right? Minot is home to 28 B-52H Stratofortress nuclear-capable bombers and 165 Minuteman III intercontinental ballistic missiles, as well as associated equipment. Colonel Gregory Mayer, the head of the 5th Mission Support Group, and Major Jonathan Welch, the 5th Logistics Readiness Squadron commander, were the two senior officers whose dismissal was announced on Monday by Air Force Global Strike Command. These personnel actions were necessary to maintain the very high standards we demand of those units entrusted with supporting our nation's nuclear mission, Major General Andrew J. Gerbera, commander of the 8th Air Force, explained. Four subordinates and the two commanders were axed as well. They held leadership positions but were not identified by either name or rank in the press release. The Air Force declined to explain what exactly had led to the decision, but Gerbera assured the public that the military remained committed to the success of its no-fail mission of strategic deterrence. According to Air Force Times, Mayer has a 25-year-long career under his belt with experience in civil engineering. He arrived at Minot last June and took charge of 1,900 airmen and military assets worth $4.3 billion. There were several high-level dismissals at the base over the past two decades, the outlet noted. The facility also faced scrutiny over misconduct, including widespread cheating on the monthly proficiency test for missileers, mishandling of nuclear weapons, unprofessional conduct, and drug use, the report added. In 2000, which by the way I want to make a note, sounds like a smear campaign to me. Uh, in 2013, Associated Press reported that an inspection of the base unearthed what one commander described as rot, including weapon safety rule violations, possible code compromises, and other failings being tolerated. The Air Force removed 17 launch officers from duty at the time. Well, you know, I might 
propose that maybe we upgrade the systems to run on something a little bit, oh, I don't know, more common these days than a 3.5 inch floppy disk. But, you know, that that's just me thinking. Um, I, uh, I don't know what's up with this. And it's concerning. Do you remember back um, sometime during the Trump administration there was supposedly um, mishandling of some missiles or something like that that was an issue. I want to say like somewhere around off the coast of North Carolina or something, somewhere off the coast of the East Coast. And um, there was some concern, and it's been, I don't remember enough of the details of it, and I, po- I apologize for that. But there was some concern about there was, that there was some posturing being done uh, when it came to those positions that they were maybe trying to uh, or maybe that's what it was. Maybe Trump removed the person or something like that. I don't know. But there was definitely some fuckery afoot that was involving our nuclear weapons. And so I'm kind of curious and concerned at the same time that that might be what is happening here. Um, m- maybe. Maybe the individuals that were in those positions refuse to do things that goes against their moral duties. I'm just speculating. Um, I don't trust it as I read it, clearly. But uh, we might want to pay attention to this stuff. When it involves our nukes, we might want to pay attention. Uh, food cost in Britain jumped 17%. I wanted to share that headline, not going to read the article, but it pretty much speaks for itself. I don't see things getting any better. Not yet. Well, I don't know if ever, to be honest. Blinken issues warning to China. If you watched the video I put out earlier today... Um, or you heard it somewhere else, uh, you'll know that China is uh, providing aid packages of its own to Russia, including some uh, rocket launchers and stuff like that, pretty much like the HIMARS and the ELRS systems. Um, I think it's ELRS. If I got it wrong, I apologize. Um, Pretty much along the same type of lines, and... uh, of course, that's one of the big red lines and all that. So I wanted to fill you in on that so you knew. Uh, this here says uh, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has again warned China of implications and consequences should it contribute lethal aid to Russia in its conflict with Ukraine. The senior U.S. diplomat made the comments in Kazakhstan on Tuesday as part of a tour of Central Asian nations. Blinken is meeting representatives of several former Soviet republics this week, including from Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. We did very clearly warn China about the implications and consequences of going through with providing such support, he said at a news conference in Astana following meetings with Kazakh Foreign Minister Mukhtar Tiluberti and President Kasim Jomart Takiev. We will not hesitate, for example, to target Chinese companies or individuals that violate our sanction or are otherwise engaged in supporting the Russian war effort, he warned, adding that he discussed the issue directly with top Chinese diplomat Wang Yi when they met at the Munich Security Conference earlier this month. So, and again, I think all of this is just a bunch of bullshit. I I really do. I think all they are doing is placating. Making people think that this is really going on when what they're really doing is dissolving the nations 
into a one world rule. That's what I think is going on. Who knows? There might be a rift between the East and the West. Maybe the East wants control of the one world government and the West wants... I don't know. I don't know. Answer is still the same for us. We can sit there and argue and fight over something that there's no way for us to know the absolute truth because we don't have access to the information. Or we can spend that time getting ready to be able to survive and, and make it through those times. I'll, I'll pick the latter option myself. Um, this, is, this, this is crazy. Um, and then the last one, it's, it's, it's telling. I'll say that. The last tab I have open is very telling. Let me have a drink of coffee, a couple of vapes before I show you that one. I think it's funny. It's hilarious and telling. That's actually good news. I think that's going to be a perspective thing. Artist refused to perform at King's coronation, says media. This is funny. Pop star Harry Styles has reportedly refused an offer to perform at King Charles III's upcoming coronation. <clears throat> Styles is the latest big name to turn down the gig, apparently due to a busy schedule, <laughs> with royal experts insisting the British monarch is not being snubbed. No, mess. No, your majesty. No, your majesty. Don't kill us. They're not shunning you. Charles III, who succeeded his... Who in the hell... You know what? You've got to be out of your mind to support that royalty nonsense at this point. I think what the royal family ought to do is pack up their shit and quietly move the hell out and leave people alone. That's what I think the royal family's smartest move would be because it's only a matter of time before they're going to be eating them bitches. You watch. You watch. That time is a-coming. Anyway, uh, Charles III, who succeeded his late mother, Queen Elizabeth II, on the British throne after her reign of 70 years, is set to be crowned on May 6th, but is reportedly having trouble securing popular musical acts for the ceremony. According to the Sun newspaper, I'm sure that you can get People like Beyonce and those fucks. Anyway, according to the Sun newspaper, pop legend Elton John and the Spice Girls have also passed up the opportunity. Dude. 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 At this point in time, if the Spice Girls tell you they're not going to perform at your event, dude. 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 They'll perform for a couple of crack rocks on the street corner. It's the Spice Girls. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know that much about them, but I'm not impressed with what I do know. Uh, previous reports also suggested that Adelaide and Ed Sheeran had rejected offers to perform. So you see how they're going down in the quality assurance program here. They, 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 I mean, Elton John, he's just kind of old news. It's not that he's bad or nothing, but, you know... Um, Adelaide, Ed Sheeran, you know, they probably asked a lot of them, but no, no, no. So they're going down. Okay, well, what about some has-beens? How about Elton John? No, has-beens aren't interested? All right, well, then how about the never-beens? What's the Spice Girls been up to? <laughs> anyway, I know they were big at one time for some people. It's perspective. They weren't big to me. They were pretty disgusting. Of course, I wasn't um, impressed with the whole that was in my um, my age group. The whole volley girl type of bullshit attitude. You know what I'm talking about? Totally, totally. 
that much pretty messed up. That uh, the Spice Girls reminded me a lot of that. Uh, let's see. Huh, let me have a couple of vapes. We'll run through these headlines. I'll get the hell out of here. Get my household duties done. Trash night. And then um, go to bed. <clears throat> but it starts with a vape. Didn't do a lot of flying. Did a little bit today. Checked out a couple of aircraft. A cub that came out. And then, uh, a helicopter. That was a pretty fun ride. Um, I was up uh, around the, um, the Kitty Hawk area with a helicopter checking stuff out. That thing is incredible. I wished I would have been recording the first time, the first time I went on the thunderstorm the other day and landed. Oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. And the weather was way worse than the one that you got a copy of. You couldn't hardly see anything. The rain was coming down and it was sheeting so bad. You couldn't hardly see anything. You could barely see the treetops just being right above them uh, to be able to keep your altitude. So anyway, um, I went over there and I struggled and I struggled. I actually put it down easy in the one that the video I, I did get shot. But I struggled and I struggled and I struggled and I had to fight that wind and when I got down close, kind of close to the ground... Um, I was already so far up on the runway that I couldn't set down because if I had any forward movement at all, I was going to go over the edge. So I literally sat there and finessed the stick on the airplane and let the wind push me backwards until I got far enough back I felt comfortable and I just literally set the plane down on all three wheels, boom, three-point landing, didn't even roll an inch. Just a three-point landing, just poof. And uh, and I let out a big sigh of relief, and I looked over to hit to to turn off the record on on the thing. And I I hit record. It's not that I forgot to hit record. What I forgot to do was change the damn scene. So even though you got a hundred percent of the audio, all you got was a black screen. And I was like, oh damn it, man. And, uh, so yeah, I wish I would have had that one, though. That was, that was kick-ass. But the one I did get was pretty good, too, so. Whenever it's wind like that, you can sit there and do that with those, those lighter aircraft. You can sit there and finesse the stick and the wind and hover with it and even fly backwards. It's pretty cool. But. If you want to learn how to fly like that, you get in a glider. If you really, really, really want to learn about flying, you fly a glider. You get good at a glider, and you've you've got it made. And I don't mean just being able to keep the damn thing in the air. I mean being able to keep the thing up in the air and then being able to land where you want to land when you're ready. I have literally, back during the FSX days, when I had Sim Game it going in full force, we literally had a non-stop, around-the-world glider flight. It was a competition. Guess who was the only cat? To make the entire trip around the planet in a glider. Me. And it took a long damn time. (laughs) (coughs) Not as bad as what you would think. Because they're not actually. When you. um, When you've got them configured right. And when you are intent on long uh, cross country flights in a glider. 
Uh, if you can manage to get up altitude, which we did, we used mountain ridges to do it. Uh, if you can really get up a good altitude going and you got your glider configured well and you choose the right, you know how to be able to keep a glider in the air, you choose the right places to go and stuff like that. And you can move pretty damn quick in those gliders. They will actually move pretty damn quick. And they're not doing mock speeds or nothing, but... Okay, let's do some headlines. Get the hell out of here. Maybe tomorrow morning I'll jump in the sim and play around in the glider. I know I keep looking at it kind of funny going, man, I do enjoy it. I enjoy the hell out of glider. <coughs> anyway, lay all you need to get a system set up and going for flight sim, damn it. Uh, U.S. Marshals hit by major att- or major hack. Uh, NATO is de facto, oh, I covered that. Uh, German debt skyrockets. China boosts Russian coal imports, says data. Moscow outlines conditions for unfreezing nuclear deal. Oh, I was just reading what you said, Lael, <laughs> on Facebook. Ass book. Anyway, uh... Yes, absolutely. Um, so here, my story with the simulator is. Um, so first of all, I'll tell you that I'll tell you the, the true story. <laughs> so first of all, I was bored one night, and I thought, you know what? I've got a fairly decent computer. I wonder if there's any games worth having. So. I got in the car, and I went to Walmart, and I'm looking down through their, you know, computer game section. Nah, nah, nah. And I saw Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I'm like, dude, I wonder if that's any good. So, you know, normally a person would purchase the game and then take it home. Um, but I'm not normal, so I... I I remembered the name of the game. I went home and I torrented it. <laughs> just just to be transparent here. Hey, I later on bought three freaking copies of the thing and Acceleration Expansion Pack. Three copies of each. So, bite me, Microsoft. Anyway, um, so I got the flight sim. And I fell madly in love. I was putting in hundreds and hundreds of hours, literally, flying. And so I started a website called Sim Gaming. And the initial, the only thing that I did with the website is because so many people didn't have the computer experience and literally didn't understand how to drag and drop a folder into another folder to add aircraft and scenery and other goodies to their, to their simulator. So what I did was completely, absolutely, 100% free of charge. I took those freeware aircraft that you can download for free and I put them in self-installers so that people didn't have to mess with that. All they had to do was click the installer, it would put it in the right place, and they were good to go. Just trying to help people out. Well, SimGame, it grew from that. And um, we started having events and stuff, doing all kinds of stuff. And one of the things I wanted to do was um, was interview some real pilots and put the interviews up on the website. So that's what I set out to do. And I, I went out to some, uh, there's a couple of local glider ports that I went out to. Um, one of them offered to take me up. And... Uh, I never had that opportunity before to go up. So I'm like, okay. I uh, literally, in full transparency, it took a couple of out of van because of my fear of heights. And that didn't help. <laughs> Got in the glider with old boy. And this thing was, um, uh, gosh, what's the name of them? I can't remember. They go way back, though. And this thing just 
particular glider goes way back. It's an old one. Schweitzer or something. I, I don't remember. But anyway, this thing looks like it was, you know, was went through and survived World War II, and now these folks are flying it. Well, anyway, uh, I got in it with them, and the tow plane took us up, and uh, the guy told me before we even left the ground, he said, look, this is how it works. We're going to get in the plane. The tow plane's going to take us up. And there is nothing that I can do until we reach a certain point. So no matter what, you have to understand that we're committed until a certain point. Okay, got it. He's like, I'll let you know when it is that we can turn back if you feel the need. So we get in. Tow plane starts taking us up, and I knew immediately I was not good. I was not good. And uh, and so I told the guy, uh, you know, I, I let him know where I, <laughs> I was not good. And so we had an understanding that when we disconnected from the uh, tow plane that we were going to be turning back around to land. So he had me, when he, we reached the proper position, he had me reach up and pull us, you know, pull us uh, the, the cable loose. And, um, and so we just banked around and got in position to land and landed. Now, I will say this. There is very few times in my life that I had ever been as frustrated with myself as I was at that moment. Because the moment that we disconnected from that tow plane, and then the first early on moments, I sunk down so I couldn't see the ground or anything like that because I was freaking petrified. And then I got to the point to where, okay, I, I got to see, I got to make, I got to watch, I got to see, I got to see. I couldn't hide no more. I had to watch because that's the kind of person I am. I want to see the train coming. I don't want to have my back to it when it hits. And as we were coming down, it was one of the most damn beautiful things I had ever been through. The feeling, the sight, just absolutely everything about coming at that ground coming up. Yeah, person scared of heights loves the ground coming up at him. I was in love. But I was also extremely embarrassed. And I had never been back to that place since. So I know I'm telling a long story just to answer your question. But... So I, uh, I did. I was embarrassed, and I have never been back there. Um, but somebody told me about an ultralight airport that was just in a small town next to our town, told me where it was, and said, hey, you need to go out there and talk to that guy. So I did. Went out there. His name was Keith. Talked to him. Gateway Airport. And um, told him my situation. Uh, and told him I was there, just talk to some pilots, maybe maybe get an interview or something to put on the website, you know. So I went out there, I don't know, a couple, three times, you know. And one day he's like, you want to go up? And I'm like, eh, you know, and he'd done, no, you know, I told him the story about what happened with the glider. And he goes, look, this is powered, we can... He goes, when we get off the ground, all we got to do is just continue the pattern around and land. We're powered. You're not committed. You're not stuck to anything. You make the call here. And uh, he did a good job of putting me in charge of the situation, which, believe me, had a, a definite effect. So we got in a uh, CGS Hawk. In fact, the last I knew, it's the uh, only SLSA CGS Hawk that has ever been built. Hang on. Uh, let's see. CGS Hawk SLSA. That stands for LSA is Light Sport, and um, the LS. Or the SLSA is Special Light Sport. It's a custom-made aircraft, okay? This is uh, the actual plane right here. Hang on. This here 
It is literally the first airplane that I flew. That exact airplane. Um, so anyway, uh, I, uh, I said, good, you know, I'm good with this. I'm good with this plan. So I got in there with them and I, I, I don't know, it just, I felt better. And believe it or not, I felt much better here in that engine, you know? That was an uneasy effect for me in that glider. Not hearing an engine and hearing the wind go across the wings was a very uneasy feeling. I didn't have that in that aircraft. And, um, and Keith took us up. We, lo and we left the ground. We got up in the air. Got up to altitude. And uh, he says, you want to fly? And I'm like... Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, there was none, yeah, and yeah, I want to fly. Are you kidding me? And so he had me take the controls. He explained the process, you know, I'm going to, you know, you have to verify you have control of the plane. I'll verify that you said you had control, you know. And so we went through all that. He explained how it's done, and then we did it. And he gave me control of the aircraft. And he says, all right, I want you to bank around to your left. We're going to fly towards Greenville. So I uh, I did. I banked around to the left. And he's just stunned. And I couldn't understand why. And I'm starting to finally answer your question now. He goes, that is the first time that I had ever seen somebody, first time in an air, flying an airplane, fly a coordinated turn he said you fly a perfect he said you'd made that turn perfectly that was completely coordinated and i'm like well yeah <laughs> line the ball up in the bubble that's what i did and he's like wow and he, i had his interest then and so that is why i got trained uh how to fly an ultralight free of charge all you know free of charge because i was his guinea pig he wanted to see how much and how long it would take to train me to fly an ultra, ultralight, considering that at that time I had had well over a thousand hours logged in a flight sim. And so um, the average person training for an ultralight is 15 to 20 hours training. I was a little over four hours. He said that it wasn't really teaching me how to fly. It was transitioning me, just transitioning me from one aircraft to another. It was like I had already had plenty of experience flying. I just needed to learn that particular aircraft. And so to answer your question, you're damn right. A flight simulator can teach you how to fly. It absolutely taught me how to fly. Um, the only difference is my chair don't have the feel of it, you know what I mean, as what the real thing does. But aside from that, does the controls do the same thing? Absolutely. You know, and if you get a, a, an aircraft that is made with a reputable developer for the flight sim, and then it's got realistic flight effects, oh yeah, it can teach you a lot about how to fly. So, but anyway, yeah, that was the very first, that is the plane, that is the actual plane, the first one that I got to fly. That's an easy one to find because of it being a uh, because of it being a uh, SLSA Hawk so anyway yep 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 and I guess they're still making them I guess I'm assuming ready to fly two place I guess they're still selling them uh, yeah call um, so the gentleman that founded the company, the gentleman that designed the aircraft, is no longer with us, unfortunately. He had passed away. But uh, it is one incredibly designed aircraft, a very safe designed aircraft. It is just, it's just an incredible bird. And uh, it's good to see that somebody took over and uh, is continuing to make them. Because that's an unfortunate thing of the ultralight world is there are so many awesome aircraft that for one reason or another are no longer available so anywho
All right. Headlines. Uh, China boosts Russian coal imports, says data. Moscow outlines conditions for unfreezing nuclear deal. Water issues hit two Crimean communities. Airspace over St. Petersburg closed amid UFO reports. And they weren't like aliens, they were like drones. <coughs> A drone records found in Russian city near Ukrainian border. A U.S. preparing false flag. Oh, I covered that. Concerns mounting over Ukraine aid, says top U.S. official. Elon Musk reclaims title of world's richest person. First Democratic challenger expe- to expected Biden 2024 bid emerges. Uh, unidentified drone crashes near Moscow. Cost from Turkey's massive quake rising. Hungary calls for justice over pipeline sabotage. Hong Kong rolls out major change to COVID rules. Sanctions against Russia dubbed poison for EU. Inflation in France and Spain accelerates. Artists refusing to... Oh, I covered that. Uh, Russia reports success against Ukrainian drone incursion. (coughs) Pardon me. Man, one second. Oh, man. All right, try this again. Um, NATO comments on Kiev's membership prospects. Reason for air traffic halt over St. Petersburg revealed. A convicted transgender rapist receives sentence. Uh, Asian ally announces more arms purchases from U.S., China identifies roots of U.S. crackdown on TikTok. A White House pushes to renew controversial spying law. Once they get that power, they're not giving it up. Anime-inspired youth movement linked to wave of violence in Russia. Uh, China poses threat to EU gas market, says IEA. Court orders Siemens to deliver trains to Russia. Uh, Putin accuses West of using extremists against Russia. Neighbor of Russia assesses mutual ties. Uh, Kiev's troops have big Nazi problem, says an ex-U.S. soldier who escaped Ukraine. Uh, BP CEO says oil and gas investment good for climate change. PSG president implicated in alleged kidnap and torture plot, says media. Serb leader proud of relations with Russia. Pentagon says it struggles to track U.S. weapons in Ukraine. Well, you kind of have to try first. Berlin left unprotected as air defense system sent to Ukraine, uh, says arms maker. Biden calls himself not stupid. He did. From my understanding, I think he said something like, I may be white, but I ain't stupid, or something like that. I I don't know. The guy is just... It's Biden. Uh, Ukraine sends more reinforcements to Artemovsk meat grinder. Uh, EU is threatening Serbia, says Vucic. U.S. Senator threatens Brazil with crippling sanctions. <clears throat> German FM plans feminist blitz. Uh, let's see. Covered those and covered that. There is a number one up there. Let me see what it is. Twitter clarifies violent speech policy. 
news as Twitter has unveiled new rules to crack down on violent speech, saying it will impose a zero-tolerance policy toward those threatening or glorifying the harm of other of another person or group. Certain exemptions will apply for cases involving satire, jokes, and some forms of artis- artistic expression. So, hmm. Whatever, I'll put it out amongst the rest of the news. Anyway, that is what I have this evening. Uh, let's see. Ah, they all answering me back on Facebook. You need a stick, man. You need a stick. Well, then buy a cheap stick. Um, they do have a cheap stick, but it's not a good stick, but it's a cheap stick. It's under a hundred bucks. I think it's around like thirty-ish or something like that. Um, look to see if they have a. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry, tech STD. I mean ST two ninety. So yeah, used on eBay nine ninety nine, dude. No, don't do it. <laughs> do not do it. Um. Don't buy a used flight stick. Here's one right here. And do I have this? I don't have this up. God, I don't have it up, man. It's limp. There it is. Um, twenty nine ninety nine. Logitech G Spot Extreme. No, no G, no Spot. Just G Extreme. Not a G Spot Extreme. Just a G Extreme. Logitech, three D Pro. Twenty nine ninety nine. Like, I mean, what? Got to just what? Sell a couple of rocks. Um, you'll be good. <laughs> Kidding, homie. Thirty bucks though. Seriously. It'll get you it'll get you in the sim. So mine's not that great, brother. I've uh I've got one that was given to me. And now you're over there. Make up my mind, man. I'm 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 seeing you in stereo, man. Computing. Okay, uh this is what I've got. Um besides Whatever the hell's wrong with my head. Um, T Flight HOTUS 1. I got HOTUS, man. HOTUS. Um, anyway, that's what I've got. 90 bucks. And it's not great, but it's all right. I, I, I would like it much, much more than something like that, the $30 one. So, you know, Golden Black Dustmaster. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of, you know, all kinds of goodies. This is what I want right here. Not a renewed one. (laughs) I want a new one. This is what I used to get. X-52. That is what I want. That thing is badass. I mean, it is so accurate. It is so, ugh. That thing is great to fly with. Really great to fly with. You can do some really stupid shit with that stick. Um, because there's just so much fine control over it. It's awesome. Um, we literally, in FSX, when FSX wasn't even remotely as good as what this one is. As far as graphics and stuff like that. And uh, we would literally land on the edge of a mountain cliff. Right there on the edge, a lot of the times in the sim, the tree line would be back just a little bit from the very edge of the cliff. And if you were good enough, you could stick that plane up there on the edge of that cliff. And then all you had to do is get enough forward movement enough to kind of propel yourself off the edge of the cliff. And then you could just fly down the side of the cliff and build up your airspeed to be able to, you know... Uh, before you crashed in the water, be able to fly off. Dude, we did it all the time. It was awesome. Um, Papa Alpha Papa Golf, if I'm not mistaken, was the identifier for the airport up in Alaska uh, that we used to do that near. But, um, yeah, it's fun, man. I'm, I'm serious. You get it? I'm telling you, man. I'll have you more hooked than you can imagine. Um, and I'll have you flying like in that video that I uploaded yesterday or whenever the hell I did it so anyway I am gonna get out of here and I uh hope y'all have a good evening
God willing, we'll not only be back tomorrow, but we'll be back on our regular channel, I hope, tomorrow. And uh, we'll go from there. So I appreciate everybody coming. Hope to see you tomorrow. And as always, God bless you. We love you. Be one with your spirit. And shalom.